Andy Clinky with Blue Cat Studio. Today we're doing something actually completely different. Um, sometimes I struggle with concentration and sometimes I get ideas in my head and I uh, just kind of feel like there's nothing I can do but sit down and do some art. So today we're going to do kind of an intuitive journaling. So I have here a moleskin um, sketchbook, but it's nice heavyweight, 110 pound or 111 pound paper. So it's really nice and thick, beautiful quality here. Um, and we're just going to kind of do a spread. So the, the point is not the end result, but the process. So some of my pages are just starting out and playing with materials. Some of them are you know, in various stages of doneness. I offload in here. Some of these are really pretty. Some of these are like completely overworked, but still kind of fun. So anyways, um, I hope that if you've got some a sketchbook or something, you will be interested in trying to join me here. So we're going to just go. I don't have a result in mind, um, and I don't even necessarily have rhyme or reason for what I'm doing. So this is definitely kind of outside my comfort zone and outside of our norm. So I'm feeling red today, and I'm going to begin with some, some actually some oil pastels to create some texture. So I've got some Artist Loft ones and then some Crayola ones. I'm going to start with Crayola, see how those do. And I'm literally just going to kind of create shape. And this is going to get mostly covered up. And so, you know, I realized I may stall out somewhere along the way and be like, wow, I just can't get past the ugly face. And that's okay if you can't get past the ugly face. Sometimes just showing up and doing something is okay. You can always put it away and come back to it. So I'm going to grab some bright yellow here because I'm also feeling some yellow. Now, the more of this I get on, then the more, well, it, it creates a funny a funny effect, right? Because of oil paints and oil, oil pastels, it doesn't really like to take... Um, other stuff on top of it, so it should create kind of an interesting effect. I don't know why I'm feeling the red today, but I am. Okay, so we've got something very random. Is it pretty? Nope, it sure is not. Are we okay with that? Yep, we are. So, let's see here. Kind of stuck between two concepts, pink and navy blue, so let's start with pink. And I literally, I did a paint party yesterday, and I have leftover paint that the kids didn't use, so I'm just going to use it instead. So this is just a basic bubblegum pink, I think, Deco Art Americana. And I think, in fact, to just keep this interesting, I'm going to grab a little bit of gesso. And gesso is, um, if you haven't used it, it's often used for priming canvases, but in mixed media, I guess I'm doing pink on this side, um, it's often used to kind of help... Um, thicken a piece of paper, make it more amenable to um, to taking other other stuff on it. The other thing I like about gesso is it has a really gritty kind of a gritty kind of texture. You know what I need to do guys? I need to stick a piece of paper under here so that not all my pages stick together. I'm not really good at that so oftentimes my pages stick together. Let me make sure that I can see this thing. Um, closed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey there, Christy. Good to see you. I have my thing. There's a little pop-up covering. I didn't see the comments. Well, thank you. And so I hope you feel encouraged to also break out some materials and experiment and play. The whole point of this is to just get a feel, get outside your comfort zone. Like, this is all outside my comfort zone. Because, you know, you guys usually know me as showing up and kind of performing and coming out with, like, a finished project and, like, isn't it cute? And we put a bow on it. This is the opposite. This is more like art for me, art for you, art for your, just kind of for your soul. And that sort of um, allowing curiosity to, to, to have a, to play. Okay. So before this gets too dry, I am going to grab... So I have a palette knife. I've got a plastic one, and then I've got a metal one. I'm going to use the metal one for now. I'm going to do a little bit of scraping. So some of that red kind of peeks through. And again, think of this as creating backgrounds and just sort of interesting textures and bits. This is not about it being pretty, right? Like, And if this is never, you know, something that one would be like, oh, that's sellable, it's okay. We're here to learn. We're here to play. We're here to mess up, too. 
So now I want to do more pink here, but I want to tone it down a smidge. So let's see, how do I want to tone that down? I think maybe I will just add, I'm going to add some brown to it. So a little bit of traditional burnt umber. Any old brown will do. Not a whole lot, but just a little. I'm going to grab a little bit of that brown and smoosh it in. So then we have a, there we go. Just kind of come in and then we're grabbing little bits of gesso. So in this case, I'm using the gesso almost like a white paint. All right, let's stick this guy in here. I know I've got like a cool painting on the back side, but it's fine. It was just a test painting. All right, so that's, there we go. A little bit more muted. I know, totally not me to go muted, but sometimes having these muted background colors is sort of helpful then when you go and put like brighter stuff on the on the foreground. Oh yeah, Christy says, yeah, gesso is quite chalky. Mm -hmm. It is, it's good for priming projects. I also love it as a top coat. <laughs> I mean, obviously to cover things because, and sometimes you can even like soften gesso and use it like as a wash. Good morning, Shelly, good to see you. And again, I realize that this is very atypical of what you normally see from Blue Cap, but it was kind of like, well, you know, if I'm going to sit down and do this, because I've, I've got to sit down and work on my thesis in a minute, and um, not in a minute, maybe in an hour, um, I was having trouble focusing, and it's like, you know, let's just get this out of my system. It creates like a beautiful like mental reset for me, because I'm just free. I don't have to think too much. Not that I'm not thinking, you know, but you're kind of, you're playing. All right, actually, yeah, it's fine. I got a few bald spots here, but I guess that doesn't really matter, does it? Because, ooh, ooh, wait a minute. I'm going to bring some of that brown kind of, or the, the muddy, the muddy pink across and just keep going with that. My kid was like, mom, there's like, no way in this world that pink and brown look good together. I'm like, oh, honey, when you were born, it was all the rage. All right, and then we'll do some scraping on this, too. And because we've got that waxy oil pastel underneath, when you scrape, because it's created kind of a dimensional thing, bits of it pop up. But it's kind of random, which is also kind of fun, right? So you get partial coverage there with the paint. Naturally, the paint actually does a really good job covering it. Um, Okay, let's see here. So I love to use my dryer to dry stuff, but now when you have this um <laughs> when you have this pastel -y stuff, it 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 melts and it gets kind of weird. So we're gonna we're gonna not. So I'll rinse my brush for a second here. Dry it off. Ugh. Super gross right there. Let's, I want to go with some navy blue. So I'm going to grab navy blue. This is just a home, a home cooked version, which was some kind of a bright blue and black blended together. Ended up needing a lot of it for a pink party one time. So I want to spread it, but I find that this particular metal one, one, not only is it bent, but it's very hard on this paper. And I feel like I can get better coverage when I use a plastic one. So I actually prefer the plastic ones. I'm just going to kind of spread some of my navy blue paint. Oh, I gotta sneeze. Oh, excuse me. Ooh. Again, we're just setting a background and we're going for ugly to start with. Oh, Shelly says she loves the pink, yellow, red combo. Yeah, me too. I, I feel like the little bits of bright are gonna pop through. Now this, I realize that adding all this dark maybe feels even kind of weird. And again, like I wouldn't normally do this. Like I don't feel like this looks amazing, but I'm hoping that after a gajillion more layers and experiments, either I'm going to learn something. Well, I'm definitely going to learn something. Um, but some of it will potentially also kind of come to be interesting. And you know what I'm seeing right in here is the navy blue in the spots where it's kind of covering the um, covering that yellow is almost creating like a limey green, which is kind of just kind of fun. So maybe we should make a limey green. 
So I'm going to grab some, uh, this is the golden green gold. It's very translucent. Uh, you know what, maybe I'll be better off with this guy. Let's see what happens with this guy instead. So this is the brilliant yellow green from Lithotex Basics. There's just something fundamentally, this, this, this makes me happy. It, I don't use it as much as quinacridone magenta, but just seeing that color makes me happy. Oh, I got junk on my finger. Oh crap, now I got it on my floor. Hi. All right, so let's see. Let's grab a, a reasonable brush. What does that mean? A brush that's just gonna kind of do what I want. So I want, I want like a bright brush or a flat brush, square brush, whatever you want to call it. Here's one, it's kind of a cheapy Amazon one. But I find these actually perform pretty well. I, my workspace is a little crowded. Silly me. All right, so I'm gonna grab some of this kind of greenish color and I think I'm gonna kind of just create some shapes here. I'm gonna put some more gesso on my palette as well because I'd like it to have kind of a chalky, a chalky feel. So I'm gonna blend a little bit of that gesso and a little bit of that citrusy green to kind of create a thicker whatever. And I'm just gonna add some shapes with a little wet spot there. So let me kind of avoid that. Oh, thank you, Christy. I just saw you said bless you from the sneeze. I usually manage to not sneeze, but that one was like, no, it's coming. See, I must be totally like relaxed and kind of in my own other sort of world. So here's where you have the opportunity to just kind of, I don't know, play, add some shapes, do some things. Yeah. I need like, I need a much bigger desk. I'm gonna do kind of a circle-y circle here. It might be a little early for a circle, but that's okay. So again, just some more green figure-y things. I feel like this kind of limey color and the navy look good together. Maybe the occasional weird stripe that makes potentially no sense. And so this is one of those things where, you know, I've actually tried to follow along with intuitive artists who do this sort of thing, and it's probably the most frustrating thing. Um, so I'm not necessarily suggesting that you follow along and try to copy this, because what you'll find is that, you know, your smudges and smears and shapes will come out differently. And so if, I, if you're sort of trying to sort of copy, copy but it doesn't, it... Oh, I don't know. I was going crazy. I wasn't exactly cursing, but I was frustrated. So hopefully, hopefully this just inspires you to, to mess around and see. And so in fact, I had one spread that like there was a couple of elements that I just really, really loved. And um, I will just scrub a little bit here too. Some elements that I loved a lot and I ended up avoiding them and kind of treating them special. I finally decided that like in some of those instances, you know, when you give something that special treatment, you, you sort of block it off and you, you, you make it, you treat it like it's perfect and above, above fixing or above tweaking. And sometimes that actually holds you back. And so I finally, so I'm just grabbing gesso now here and kind of smushing it into some of the wetter parts of the, of the Navy to kind of create some semi ugly smudges and just some blendy things. And again, this is a process. Let's see, I was saying something. I was. I really I had this point. Oh, and so sometimes getting really attached to a particular particular portion of your painting, um, you know, that is if the painting's not totally working, can hold you back because you protect it and you hold it sacred. Um, and honestly, some of these pieces started to really come together when I stopped holding those my favorite part sacred and started messing with them and covering over them and deciding to let them go. So I'm just kind of scrubbing. And again, I still feel like this looks a little bit chaotic and a little bit ugly. And that's the point, my friends. Well, it's sort of the point, you know. So again, more gesso. So I don't know how much pink is eventually even going to be showing here, but that's okay. Little bits peeking through will be cool. 
this isn't quite working for me, but that's okay. We'll do more layers. I'm going to rinse my brush real quick. And of course, dry it off. This is where you can kind of take a moment to pause. So I also have some Marabu, Marabu, whatever you call them. Um, well, actually, I got a couple of things. The art crayons, the Marabu art crayons, which these are amazing. The other thing I just picked up, I don't know if you've ever seen them, but the Stabilo Woody 3-in-1s. They're like, um, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. They're just so, they're, look at this. I mean, it's just, it's like, and you get it wet. So it's like a watercolor, gooey crayon. They're very similar. They're not quite as gooey as the Marabu, or however you pronounce it. Um, but the thing is that when you put them on, then, like any time other paint gets on it, it's going to mix, it's going to blend, which sometimes is a good thing. So this one is turning out to be one of my favorites, this woody. And it's a, the tealy, turquoisey color. So let's see, I've got wet paint there, so I think I'll get a, kind of get a circle here. Another one here, and then maybe some scribbles, kind of right over some of that grayish tone that I did. And maybe a little boxing in of this guy here. And all right, sometimes I go a little extra, I have to be cautious. Or I go, I get too even, and sometimes you need it to be uneven, so I'll just kind of keep that keep that kind of tealy pencil in a corner and then maybe something here and something here why I don't know we'll circle that guy oh the teal pencil um so these are stabilo um they're stabilo three and one woodies let's see there's a black one might be easier to read um, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like the the art crayons the watercolor um, wax thing it it's just really I don't know it's really nice <laughs> I love the effect and that teal one is especially vibrant and then here's a Marabu one that's this one's called pomegranate I mean, this is just this one I find delicious look at that rich rich color that happens there oh in fact. This guy, I need some of this in my life. Oops. Apparently, I had some wet paint. Never, never I should worry. So we'll kind of take some of that in here and around. And this is one of those gooey things where I can, I can again, wet my finger and kind of smudge. You can get a brush wet and use it as well. So I'm going to kind of do a little coloring in here. And so in some ways we're just kind of mark making, right? And these are very waxy. So like you can smudge them with your finger, kind of make it pretty. It's like it's basically this pomegranate is quinacrid on magenta. I now have a quinacrid on magenta coloring stick. Ha 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 ha. I'm in heaven. And let's see here, what do we got? Colors, colors, colors. Like a little something here, and a little something here to kind of frame out this guy. And hopefully, as you see this, you can kind of get a sense of like what the different what the different media can do as well. Like I just got these, and you know, half the colors were all ratchet and messed up. At Michael's so I didn't buy them I just picked out like my most favorite colors and honestly this one is like takes the cake I think this teal one was also cool why have I opened it mm, no I suppose I haven't well I don't know if this teal one is cool so this is the Marabu it's different from the two-in-one or the three-in-one woody but it's like gooier but it's like velvet going on it's so cool all right, so taking a quick peek to see what we want to do. I'm going to go after this with a Sharpie. And this is kind of a dying Sharpie, so I can get away with it. And so we could do, 
Hmm. Actually, pink pens would be good too. Hmm, what do you want to do? I want to do some more smudging is what I want to do. So like I promised, this is sort of me in the I don't know what zone and it's okay. So a little bit of smudging here. A little circling maybe. So the purpose of this is definitely to get quite abstract. All right, so now I'm going to break out the Posca pens. I really want a navy blue. I've got this bright blue. It's a little bit too bright. So mm, let's go with tangerine and see what happens. So maybe make some, oh, that's not tangerine exactly. That's just straight up orange. Okay, so just making some, some circles here, kind of like repeating sets of dots. Ruh -ruh. I'll be careful of that wax from the oil pastels. I think just a couple of dots in here to kind of almost polka dot it or just add some texture. And maybe some wiggly lines. kind of like the beauty of something like this is sky's the limit. If you can think it, you can do it. Sometimes just little repeating parallel lines is kind of cool. And I kind of like this repeating parallel and then or up, up and down, horizontal and then vertical, horizontal and then vertical. It almost feels like a language or a code or something. Maybe some outlining and oranging of this. Now what I really need is like a chisel, a chiseled version of this, like the chisel tip, they're really fat. I'm feeling like we've got some good lights and some good mid-tone, or excuse me, some good darks and some good mid-tones. I want to come in and add some kind of lighter, highlighty types of things. Where's my pens? Where's my pens? And at some point, and that we have to wait till the end, otherwise we kind of mess with our surface. So a little white circle in there. Maybe some hashed lines that kind of just repeat. To be careful though, I might dye the tip as I get into this marabou stuff. Sometimes just repeating lines. In so many ways, we're really just kind of making marks. Like, I feel like this one wants to kind of create some sort of weird repeating something. Oh, Christy says, so pretty. Thank you. And it's okay, these things go through awkward phases. Um, I've got a few pieces that have been very awkward and just kind of never really, never, haven't quite gotten there yet. 
But that's the beauty of art journaling is you can work on a thing for a while and then when your brain is just like, you know, this isn't working, you don't have to throw it away. You can just walk away for a while. Almost like a scrubby, awful flower right there. Make it slightly less awful, I don't know. And like a house. Not that that was where that was going, but that's what it's turned into. So we'll add some windows. That was totally unplanned. Again, most of this is <laughs> totally unplanned. Um, all right. I want some white around here as well. I'm a little... I don't know if I can get away with it with the current with this guy. No. I really wanted I wanted a white marabou, but they didn't they didn't have one that wasn't like half racked. And I'm like, I'm not paying like five bucks for a a broken crayon. I'll pay five bucks for a good one, but not five bucks for a broken one. No, this one isn't doing what I want. Alright. Yeah, so if you're thinking about doing this, I mean, you can certainly try to recreate this, um, but it you may end up sort of frustrated. So give yourself some grace and think of it more as a more as a a technique. All right, I'm not quite getting the white the way I want it. Okay, so we're going to come back to a brush. Where's that one I was using? Here we go. We'll go this guy, and we'll jump into some gesso. I'm going to water it down a little bit. So watery gesso. I think I'm going to pick up some of that in here, which is also going to blend some of my teal and kind of create. So this is getting really busy. So one of the things we can do is start to use gesso to blend in a few spots and, and create these bigger chunks of um, what am I trying to say like solid solid color okay I like this piece so we're not gonna mess with that yet I'll come in here and see what happens no I don't like that I like the dark so wipe that off sort of we'll do a little blendy blend going in here so here's the thing, now I've got this kind of wet, funky paint. I can actually come back in with this guy and just kind of keep going. It's easier when it goes in right over the top of itself. So I lost some of the, the cool white line in there, but I'm not sure it was really working anyway, so it's not that big a, not that big a deal. Grab a little water. Again, this is what those marabous do as it blends because I've got a little bit of gesso on my on my brush, it's making it extra creamy and extra opaque. Well, let's see, I do love how that's working. I think I want a little chunk and something here. Get a pinch of the gesso to kinda, oh, that got really wet. Oh, well, hey, it's really wet. Let's try something. It's not wet enough to dribble though. Come on. Dribble. Hey, let's give it some water for incentive. Dribble. Yeah, thank you. A little bit of gesso in there to give it some more solid incentive. Can it dribble somewhere else too? Come on. Dribble, please. It doesn't want to dribble. I'm trying. Ah, come on. Dribble. Dribble. Let's do this. Yes. You're not dribbling the way I want you to. That's totally nonsensical, I know. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm like, dribble, dribble, dribble. So that's a lot of work for a couple of dribbles, but oh, I got some dribbles. Yay! <laughs> All right. Put the lids on these. Actually, I don't think I have a working lid for this blue one. We'll just sort of cover it up. And that's all left over from a paint party I did. So, you know, 
If it dries up and dies, it's not the end of the world. I have a little something in this zone here. I kind of like this muted teal color. Like I feel like I would struggle to actually mix this color um, like on purpose on a palette, but I do like the way it's kind of coming out as we as we form some of these shapes and things in here. Of course that leftover teal on my brush is kind of informing what happens here as I blend. Um, I'm losing some of that kind of beautiful quinacridone color, but I can always come back in and add more if I really want it. I rinse my brush real quick. I need to let some of this dry. I also feel like I want some yellow. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Let's see here. So I'm going to do yellow paint because I feel like I've, I've got best control over that one today. But I also am going to need some white or some... Um... <laughs> Christy says I get it, not so nonsensical. Well, there you go. Some white and some... Ge or gesso and some yellow. So again, that'll kind of give it that gritty, really opaque, um, slightly matte finish, which we like. I like. So I'm going to kind of come in and do some dots that sort of hang out nearby. They may need a second coat because they're looking very textural in a way that I'm not really, not really jiving with. So one of my friends was like, hey, you know, sometimes I just like to watch art videos and unwind. I don't really want to do the art. I just want to watch. Could you do kind of like a quiet, you know, painting where you're just kind of in your element doing your thing. And I was like, oh. so that's kind of also what inspired me to try this one today. Um, I'm just kind of not exactly quiet though. Kind of talking my way through what I'm thinking. I almost want an orangey or yellow, but I do like, I do like kind of how that flows. So sometimes as I'm doing this, I like to think about creating a rhythm that sort of moves from one side of the page to the other. Um, so that they don't feel like two distinct pieces, but um, but one kind of cohesive cohesive whole. So I'm gonna scrub a little yellow here. I know we were in the mark making zone, but now I'm gonna scrub some and look how that's picking up little bits of that teal. I guess I'm losing my yellow. It's becoming a green. It's not the worst thing though. Oh, and there was our little flower we sort of sketchy sketched out. And we'll kind of come around it. Going back to my yellow. Maybe. Of course, yellow would be the perfect color on the inside of that flower, huh? Where are we at here? And so I didn't send out a text today to let you guys know that I'm going live, but if you would like to be added to my text list, uh, especially for reminders about like my Technique Tuesdays um, and whatever it is that's going to replace the Thursday lunch and paints because I'm not going to be having those same lunch breaks um, from school since I'm almost done with school. You guys can always text me 855-737-2245. Um, just an option. Again, this is really not about promoting or talking up Blue Cat Studio. This is really just about playing and you know, giving you permission to also come play. So, all right, this is not quite working yet, but that's okay. Sometimes you got to mush a little to to get to where you want to be. Some of my yellows are going green. My fault because I've gotten it into this other stuff. And I got a bunch of paint here. I'm literally just going to flip this over and offload into my journal. Maybe get a little water on it. Spread it out. And I've already basically started another background. Hopefully I can work real well with yellow at some other point. Now I'm not going to blow dry this because i got too much waxy stuff going on. But for this one, I'm definitely going to get a bit of a little blow dry so that my stuff doesn't stick together too bad. Good. Now I can rinse my brush. And that's just going to kind of keep my rinse water cleaner longer. And I don't know. I know y'all don't like to rinse paint or don't like to don't like to, to waste paint. Although you know somebody had that wrote the best thing um, on one of my posts 
I think it was this morning. I was so impressed. She said the only paint wasted is the paint that you never use. That's and basically the stuff that stays in the tube. That's wasted paint. So I urge you to go unwaste some paint today. Oh, I love this Marabu stuff. Oh my gosh. It's quinacridone in a stick. I'm in the happy place, you guys. Oh, ha, ha, ha. This little bits of the yellow and are peeking through here. So I'm getting some really vibrant spots. All right, let's try the orange one. I can't remember if this orange one looked... Is this orange or red? What color? It has a name, right? Chili. Chili. It's kind of a reddy, a reddy color. Interesting. Well, I think it, it becomes like a nice complement to the quina. So we'll just kind of stick it right next to it and allow it to kind of blend through. I lost some of my little symbol-y things. That's okay, though. They show in a few spots. I kind of like these together. They kind of be create this like blend where you just feel like this sort of warmth happening. Ooh, I can kind of scrape some of that because I've got a lot of texture. So here's another thing is you could do this, like scribble, scribble, and then come in with like a, this one's obviously well loved, scrape in it. Kind of create some scrapey bits. I don't have to do it in all of them, but again, it's just about creating texture. So I do want a more solid white. I know I was going there and then I like squirreled on that. So let's see. I'm gonna come in and kind of solidify a little bit around these guys. And it's okay if it picks up some of the background color. So sometimes you gotta squint at it, move in, move out. I'm not loving that. I guess I can just come over it at some point. some of the sort of blocky chunky sections so maybe add a little water here and again just kind of smush you can kind of touch it with your fingers ooh always feels so cool we wipe off some of that here so you get this cool wash I don't know oh here's a wait where did I put it you get a dry guy here like this, and you could literally like kind of make a, I know it's weird, but kind of lift some of that paint with your thing. So it's, it's, it's an in-between kind of zone thing. It's just dribbles drying pretty, pretty whatever it is the word I'm looking for. All right, here, I'm going to go for more watered down white and just kind of do something kind of in here a little scrubby scrub so it's not going to be light or white it's just going to be a light spot yeah i didn't like those lines i drew in but that works a little better so again sometimes you got to change your perspective stand up look down on it squint at it i need to get me some navy blue markers or something One of these navy blue or indigo. -y. This is kind of a bright blue. I like the bluey black look. Let's see. Maybe we could just add some some dark in here. Again, this is water soluble, so if it gets paint on it, it's going to change the it's going to change the flavor of it a little bit. Oh, in some cases, I think it'd be cool. So I'll lick my ooh, my finger's too dirty for that. Get this brush a little bit wet and I can kind of blend some of that blue right in around here so it gently overlaps some of those white marks and pops. It's also kind of grabbing some of that quinacridone and creating a cool 
like unexpected kapow of purple. A little bit more down here and kind of bring it up. And then just wet it a little bit to just kind of blendy blend. Amplify some of the blue, create some purplish. Oh, I like that. Be like a little bit right in this zone here. I'm trying to, well, I guess I'm trying to not spend too much time in the awkward, ugly zone. We get there though, and it's okay. Oh, Christy says, I never thought of that way. Sounds wonderful. I need to change my mindset. <laughs> I know, the not wasting paint. That just really struck me this morning as kind of beautiful. All right, so a little tiny zone. So I realize I'm doing really small stuff right here, but I'm feeling like sometimes just a little corner bits or whatever just want to be kind of filled in or touched or just lightly kind of blended a little bit just for a subtle kind of feel right in there Again, that allows me to bring just a smidge of that blue in right in here and again this is where these where these uh, two-in-one woodies really are just wonderful because you can scribble a little bit and then you can come in with a brush and and tune and blend and treat it almost like a watercolor I'm no watercolor expert though, let me tell you. That is not my strength. Maybe one day, but not today. Just a little bit on our flower here. I know it's not much of a flower anymore, but... We have, we have stuff like it references a flower. It kind of says, hey, I might be a flower at some point. I was a flower. I've been through a lot of iterations. Yeah. So this one I really got to kind of focus on having a good amount of water on my brush. Ooh, there we go. That's pretty. We'll bring some of that blue over here into what sort of was a house. Yeah, Christy says watercolor is a whole other beast. Yep. When I was a kid, like in grade school, we actually got taught like how to really do watercolor. So I have like one pretty awesome watercolor painting. You would never know that like a eight year old did it. But I could not re reproduce that to save myself. No recollection of how we did that. Just adding a few little blue, these rich blue accents. I feel like this darker blue or cobalty color. It's a, kind of a, a rich but grounding effect. I'm liking it. So again, do I know what I'm doing? Not really. But that's kind of the, the beauty of journaling is you come in and you play. And this is just such a great way for me to reset my brain. I know that after this, I'm going to have no issue sitting down and focusing on like hammering out like a few really critical, you know, pieces of, of my thesis that need to happen. Ooh, ooh, okay. So I'm loving that rich blue and the yellow and the little pop. And how are we doing on time? Have I just been yammering on for like ever? Oh, 43 minutes. Okay, not bad. So this isn't bad for 45 minutes, 43 minutes of... of of messing. Still not a fan of this. So, ooh, okay, you know what? Let's do this. We're going to come back in. I have to be careful here because it's wet. Since I think I'm mostly done with the other stuff, I'm going to come back in with um, oil pastels. So I know for the oil pastels, these sort of rich purple tones are stunning. Oh, I have a navy. I have a navy. So I could add some navy scribble in a few spots. 
And because this is oil pastel, I can't really blend it that well unless I've got like paint thinner or there was something, I forget what it was, maybe turpentine. Or you can use your finger and it'll smudge it, but not, not easily. A little bit of that navy to kind of say hello to the other blue. Have a little bit deeper grounding effect. See, I can smudge it a little with my finger. Some of it I just like that kind of sketched in kind of crayon-y look. So we can kind of come around these a little. Give this guy a little, little ring around the rosy there. These guys feel weak. What's that color? Ooh, oh wait, hold the phone. What, what does Crayola? This is sea green from Crayola. It's like a 28 pack. I probably got it on Amazon or whatever. I don't even know. I've had it. I've been carrying this box of stuff around for years and not using it because I was too afraid. Which is why they look brand new. Scribbles here. That kind of goes nicely with this bit. I want something dark and grounding, so we'll come back in with a little bit of... Oh, I grabbed a purple. Oops, I thought that was a navy. Well, that's fine, too. So i just outline some of your dots to kind of add some interesting texture. I need to do something in here. I don't like the stems of these things sort of going botanical, but it, in my opinion, it didn't really work. Okay. All right, so that deep sort of violet purple is really nice. I totally meant to grab the navy blue, which is right here, but they kind of go together, so we'll kind of just blend a little. And so as you can kind of see, we've got a lot of kind of texture and layers and stuff, and I think this navy and this deep violet are kind of kind of fun together. So it's almost a dioxazine. They call it blue violet. Okay, blue violet. There you go. I wonder what the white will do. This a broken chunk. Eh, not so much. I do like the grounding effect of the navy. It really kind of brings things. Such a great substitute for black. And you can kind of get a wonderful blended textural look. You can start to see some of the other paint strokes and things going on underneath as we um, kind of use our fingers to blend. This guy needs... What does this orange look like? That's kind of a yellow. It's what a tangerine color. Somebody needs to leave me in charge of creating the colors. Please. Ooh, that's kind of peeling up layers. I'll just scrape because we can. Not working. So, palette knife, mushy gesso. I'll just put some stuff over it, why not, right? A little bit of this kind of navy. So uh, for me, the biggest frustration with watching other mixed media artists do stuff is I'll watch them cover up something that I like the most and I get so mad. So, you know what? If you're having any emotions, I I totally understand. I apologize. <laughs> I feel better now that that is kind of sorted out. I still don't like that section, but it's not irking me the way it was. So I feel like this is getting pretty close to where, I don't wanna say where I want it to be, but it's, it's coming together pretty well. Um, Maybe, what do we want to do in here? Can I, oh, this one is called turquoise. Oh, and this, this is my teal as well. 
Doesn't have a name. Is that the green? That's the green. I think. I don't know. Did I misplace one of my... Man, you guys, look at me. I really make crap every which way. A little green. I don't know. I'll come in with this guy and see what happens. Again, this is the water, the water soluble stuff. I like that yellow spot. I want it back. Well, I don't get it back. Okay. That looks particularly gooky and overworked. One more blob of yellow to just kind of round it out or unhinge it as the case might be. Some of these yellows are very lime colored. I want it to feel different, which of course, if you really want it to feel different, sometimes you've got to go with like a, like more of a cadmium yellow or primary yellow, whereas this is like a bright lemon yellow. What I didn't break out today was some of the inks. I have like some Bombay inks. Um, those are great for background. Once you get all this other stuff on, especially acrylics, the inks don't really do much because they like they like straight paper. Although they might make good dribbles. Ooh, should we try an ink dribble? No, but only have out is a Bombay orange. Let me see. Where's my ink? Where's my ink? Dale and Rowney fluorescent. Ooh, that one's interesting. It's like a aqua. Let's see what happens. Do I have white too? White would be good. I have white somewhere. Ooh, or a purple, a violet. I think I want to go with teal. Yeah, this is getting pretty close, at least in my book, to, to a good stopping point. But I'm gonna, so I'm just offloading some yellow here because I can. And I may come back to it. I may be like, you know, I just want to add this or I just want to add that. Or I may move on and say, hey, that was not bad, you know, for for getting my brain kind of in the in the right place or where I wanted it to be. about teal. So I'll squeeze it, get some ink in the dropper. All right, so I'm going to put some here, a little bit here, see what happens. Kind of get it queued up to go. So it's almost like making a crown shape. And then, well, I guess this is blue ink water. This guy could be asking for it like this. Yep, I've kind of clogged it up. All right, that didn't work. I still have a water spray right here. All right, well, we'll just dribble water on it then. Dribble. And we're going to see what happens if we do this. Whoosh. So two of them dribbled nicely. One of them kind of didn't. Let's see if I can bring out and create a second one. Get a couple of streams there, maybe. That one go. Psh, it joined the other one. Fine. Fine. Oh, I want a fluorescent dribble right here at the top on this end here. Whether that makes sense or not, I don't know, but I want to see what happens. All right, so we'll try three independent, three kind of independent uh, tracks. All right, they merged. Spread them out a little. I know. It's almost like I'm messing with gravity and nature here. Come on, dribble. Oh, all that one. Ooh, that one along the edge is working really nicely. The other stuff is not very visible. So I see if we can add a smidge more. Kind of liven it up a little. All right, there's a bit here that dribbled. So where's your. There it is. Can you guys see that happening? Actually caught on a ledge of of gook of gook. That's an official term. It's caught on a ledge of the oil pastel. Ew, that did not work out so well. Apparently, I've got a dribble here, so we'll just kind of add some water to it and see what happens, or some ink. Ooh, 
All right. Ooh, gosh, you guys. Okay. So here is all about, yeah, you know, you kind of can't use ink on top, but yes, you can. You can use ink to dribble. Ooh. All right, the streams. So we're split and then came together and we got stuck here. Maybe we'll help it along and just kind of create a little path for it to kind of come down. Boom. Give this guy a little path to come down. All right. Oh, I'm really loving that hot pink. That, that fluorescent pink doing its weird dribble thing is was the finishing piece that I needed. So I'm I'm good. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. You're welcome to um, ask questions on this, whether you're catching the replay or watching it live. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and are feeling inspired to break out your own journal and do something weird and potentially unexpected and outside your comfort zone. But as you saw here, it was like, well, that worked, that didn't work. Let's tweak this, let's tweak that. Sometimes you never know how, to, how it's going to how it's gonna go, um, but that's that's the joy of it. And so I think of this as like art for me versus art for the public. So in some ways it was kind of like, well, you know, I kind of want to experiment in private in case I mess up, but at the same time, you know what? If you don't see me experimenting and trying stuff and you don't see others doing it, you only ever see them creating something perfect, um, the message that's gonna send you is that, you know, you got to do better and honestly experimenting and learning and sometimes it turning out at least in a way that makes you personally happy is um it's pretty huge like yeah i can't believe that hot pink oh my gosh i dare say this is my new favorite thing so this is the de la roni um fluorescent rose basically hot pink ink this is crazy phenomenal so again this was a little bit outside of our norm um, but it sure was fun to do. I tell you, I really want to take my heat gun to this because I'm sitting here seeing all this wet stuff, but I, ha I know I'm like, nope, I'm not allowed to. I've got to leave it. I've got to just like, just let it be. And I don't know that I'll ever come back to this guy, but it will be really fun to sort of flip through the pages um, and be like, oh yeah, look at that one I did. You know, that's the beginning of the journal. So if you're interested in the journals, again, this is the moleskin one and it's got a really thick kind of mixed media um, paper to it. Another one I've got over here is a Strathmore mixed media and it's uh, 90 pounds. So it's a little bit lighter, but, oh, that's the intro page. But it's still really, really thick, it's, and it's got a wonderful tooth to it. This was me just kind of playing with something very, very simple here. It's kind of fun because it's got the gold. I didn't use gold in the other one. And this was also just experimenting with those, um, with the Stabilo 2-in-1, or 3-in-1 woodies. So almost all of the color here is the Stabilo woodies, and then I think it's just like white paint or paint pen and some gold paint. Very, very simple. And so you don't even have to do a two-page spread. Sometimes you can just do a single one-page spread. And the more you get comfortable like messing around with stuff like this in small scale and trying new things, even if you're not winning, um, this translates beautifully to large-scale canvases. So anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a day. It's time to go work on my graduate thesis because I'm like counting the number of days I've got left on one hand, right? So... We'll see you guys in the next one, 7 p.m. on Tuesday night for our um, Technique Tuesday. And then we should be able to do a lunch and paint on Thursday as well. And that may be the last one because uh, the schedule is changing. So I need to figure out how to come live to you guys some more um, in the future, especially on Thursdays or weekends or whatever. But, hey, now that I'm not going to have, like, graduate school homework, that could be nice. All right. Love you all. See you later. Bye.